Good evening, everyone. Welcome to A Word from the Lord. James Ophir here with Mark McMinnis. Again tonight, we are uh, uh, coming to you live tonight. This is June the 29th, uh, next to the last night of the tent meeting. The tent meeting goes on uh, tomorrow night, so last night in Brazil. If you haven't been out to the tent meeting, we invite you to come out. We've been out knocking the doors. I don't know, Mark, I think, uh, what have we It's well over, done? I think it's over 5,000 yeah. doors knocked. So we've we've invited a lot of people to come out to the tent, and we've had, I think, a pretty good turnout. Yeah. Um, a lot of visitors come out from the community, some that have been to the tent before, some that have not. Um, tonight we had a gentleman roll in, and we thought he was a member from the community. He came all the way from Kentucky. Uh, I'm, sus I'm assuming a member of the Lord's Church. Uh, he came all the way from Kentucky just to be a part of the tent meeting, so we appreciate that. That's a real encouragement. And uh, if you haven't been out, and you live, you know, 10, 5, 10, even 15, 20 miles from the tent, uh, you know, shame on you, really. Uh, yeah, it is. Come it's out a, and support it. Amazing to me, James. Um, you know, Caleb preached last night, and he was talking about, you know, how these so-called denominational preachers, they're always talking about how people should be tithing, and they're, you know, they're getting people to pay for their false doctrine that they're not willing to, you know, give a defense for, and I've heard people, you know, talk to people door knocking. They, you know, ask them where they go to church. Oh, I go to Gretna. You know, they drive yeah. miles, miles and miles to hear false doctrine and to pay for it. Yeah. Well, and, I've I found people in <laughs> talk to people in Eden, and they drive all the way to, or excuse me, in Danville, and they drive all the way to to Eden. You know, for a, you know, social club environment yep. at Osborne Baptist. You know, just because they got the big tree house and the coffee shop and the whatever else and the feel good. Well. And they drive hours to ball games, you know, but they won't drive ten minutes. To yeah, hear, ten hear fifteen truth. minutes to hear the tent uh, under tent. Hear the truth for free. For free, like, like yeah. God said, We're and, not charging uh, you anything. You know, spend an hour, an hour of your time, really, uh, give or take. And then, and, and so, really, it's just the devil's got, the devil's uh, smart. He's he got it figured out. To get people to pay for stuff that they don't yeah. need, and uh, that will actually send them to hell. And then they'll reject the things that are free. That they do need, like Michael's lesson tonight on uh, hardening of the heart. Hardening of the heart. God hardened their heart. Well, how do you do that? It's not by direct action. Right. It's just you <clears throat> play a big part in it, and that, that's how, how you re how you react to the to the truth. That's so, right. yeah. That, as a matter of fact, Mark and I were talking about uh, Michael's lesson. We didn't get to hear it all because we had to leave to come here. But yeah. um, uh, that'd be definitely one that you want to get and, and listen yeah, to again. I'm going to get it. I'm, I'd like so, to hear the end, <laughs> end of that so, one. So, well, tonight, friends, uh, I want to give you our contact information, 276-340-2653 is how you can reach me, and uh, we'll put the phone lines up uh, momentarily, and you can call in with your with your uh, live calls. <clears throat> but tonight, uh, Mark and I, we talked a little bit about this last week, Mark, right. and uh, we're going to continue talking about some things that I, I hope will help you as a member of, of society, member of the community, when you are talking to your religious neighbors, especially ones that are known to be coming around knocking on doors. And I hope that what we can help you do, friends, is realize that we have the truth and we're not afraid to give it. And it can actually help you answer some of these people that are trying to, to lead you astray. But at the same time, if you know that we can help you out in one area, why won't you let us help you out in another area? So it's kind of like, well, I'll, I'll let you help me out when it's something that I... Uh, that we both don't like, but when it comes to something that that I like, but it's still wrong with the Bible, then you know people don't want any help, and right. and so we really have a lot of information that we can help uh, people if they would just let us be helpful to them, you know. Yeah. So tonight, what we're going to be talking about is waiting on the witnesses, and the reason I say waiting on the witnesses, we're talking about the Jehovah's Witnesses, and it's because a uh, conversation that Mark and I had, we've been out door knocking. When was this? Y yesterday. Wednesday, mm. third Tuesday, Wednesday? One day this week. It's Wednesday. I think it's yesterday. <laughs> yeah, it was yesterday we were out uh, door knocking and we've we... been door knocking every day yeah, this week. Yeah, we've been door knocking uh, a lot. And so, but this happened yesterday and it just kind of baffled us that this would, would be the reaction from someone in the Jehovah's Witness that most people would say is known for getting out and wanting to spread their message, right? So... Uh, this is what we're saying, waiting on the witnesses. Now, uh, when we say that, let me just play this video. I think some people might, might remember this commercial, Mark. 
And we were kind of joking about it, how, how lonely it would be if we were waiting on the Jehovah's Witness to do what they said. Right. You know, we actually said they, uh, we were told, well, how long ago was it Mr. Valentine told you that you'd have, he'd have a Bible study with you? Uh, that was probably 2010, 2011, something like that. It's so seven, six, eight years. Yeah, okay. So this is what we're saying. If, we, if you are waiting on someone like the Jehovah's Witness to uh, give you a, a Bible answer for what they believe, that, that doesn't seem to work with us. So this is kind of how we feel uh, when it comes to waiting on the witnesses. You men have all volunteered to be Maytag repairmen, so I'm going to give it to you straight. Maytag washers and dryers are built to last. That makes a Maytag repairman the loneliest guy in town. Look at this rugged motor, this almost indestructible pump. Take a good look, because most of you may never see the inside of one of these again. This is your survival kit. Playing cards for solitaire. Crossword puzzles. Beadwork. Keep these with you at all times. Okay, men, wear your Maytag emblem proudly. The sign of dependable watchers and dryers. So what if nobody needs you? It takes a real man to fight off loneliness. A Maytag repairman. <laughs> it's the loneliest guy in town. All right, so the Maytag repairman sometimes makes us feel like the Maytag repairman because we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for these guys to say that they'd have a Bible study with us. And, and I know I've said, Mark, uh, I know they've been to my house uh, three times, and I, I say, you know, I'd like to have a Bible study, you know, you know, when's a good time, set it up, here's my name, address, phone number, yeah. and they never come back, and you said Mr. Valentine told you that six, seven years ago. Yeah, uh, we was talking about the Godhead then, and he actually said that he had plenty of scriptures that prove that Jesus is not part of the Godhead, and so... We exchanged information. He said he'd get back with me. I've been by the building there on Terry Avenue several times, like we went yesterday. Yeah. And hadn't been able to catch him. He hadn't been back in touch with me. And I've even, you know, they'll come to my house. I'll invite them. I'll study the Bible with you. Mm -hmm. But we're going to, you know, this is what the Bible says. We're not right. going by their literature. Now, one of the ladies, I don't know whether you want to get into that clip or not, but she actually agrees with me. She said, where do you find comfort? And I said, well, I find comfort in God's holy word. And she said, I'm so glad you said that. And she said, that's what we believe. And she said, I want to give you this magazine. <laughs> Why? <laughs> you know? And I was recording. I'm, I'm, you might as well face it, folks. We're going to record. Yeah. And, uh, Especially come, if they come to our door. Yeah. You know, you come to our door. I mean, you can go, we pulled up at Walgreens down here. There's recording in progress. Right. Wait a minute. You didn't ask me if you could record my me? permission, yeah. So. Uh, and why would you ha why would you have uh, uh, be afraid to? Yeah, Jesus said, "Go out and teach the gospel to every creature." Okay, was were the apostles afraid somebody was going to record their message? No, they were. The Holy Spirit was recording it. <laughs> the Holy it. Spirit was recording it and preserved it. That's so, right. So, uh, but this is so. Well, let's just start with Mr. Valentine, and we're going to listen to what he says. We're going to kind of go through some of the things that, friends, this this should help you. Uh, we're trying to give you some. Uh, some information, some, some uh, ammo, if you will, that will help you combat uh, when these folks come knocking on your door. This is something you can say to them that I guarantee you they can't answer. You know, it'll trip them up. And so I'm not afraid to give you, I'm not afraid to give you the, 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 the arguments because they can't answer them, uh, even from their own book. So let's listen to what Mr. Valentine said, then we'll kind of go through this. He's talking about the Godhead. Is Jesus God? Because of some of the references in the back? Yeah. And this is uh, about oh, yeah. ancestor worship. Mm -hmm. This is uh, worship. Um, God alone to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm like taking that you all don't believe that Jesus is God, is a part of the Godhead. We don't believe that, no. We don't believe that, no. We don't believe that, no. Okay, well actually right here in uh, Revelation 1-8, it mm -hmm. says, I am Alpha and the Omega. Mm -hmm. There's Jehovah God. Mm -hmm. So when they're speaking of Alpha and Omega, mm -hmm. you and I both can see that speaking of Jehovah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. But in Revelation 22, when it speaks of Alpha and Omega, uh, if we notice who is talking, it's called Christ, right? Uh, 
All right, now let, let's, let, let me put the scriptures up here. Tell me the scriptures you're giving again so we can let our, our viewers see this and we'll go through it again. Well, Revelation 1. Revelation 1, where, where Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Revelation 1, 8. Right? Right. Let me get where I can we enlarge it just a little bit. All right. Then uh, Revelation 22. So here's Jesus saying, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. Now we're going to go to Revelation 22, verse. And this is one of the... What's the verse? It's verse 7. Is one uh, when I believe her name was Doris came to my door one day. It was a Jehovah Witness. And I asked her this. And I said, uh, verse 7 says, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keep the sayings of the prophet of this book. And I asked her, I said, now who is coming? And she said, well, Jesus is. And so then you go down to verse 13. Uh, it says again, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the la uh, end, the first and the last. Verse 16 plainly says, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Okay. And so how can you refute? That they 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 say that Alpha and Omega that's Jehovah. Okay. Okay. Is that what their is that what their book says? Does it, does he say <clears throat> Jehovah in in the uh, New World Translation? The New World Translation, friends, is is their book. Uh, you can't even see it now. It's, I got the wrong color green. Mine's green, so uh, disappeared. A, uh, which I wish more, it would disappear. You know, it'd be nice if it would just disappear from the face of the earth. Here's a more revised edition. Okay. <laughs> they revise it pretty frequently. <clears throat> And it amazes me too. The uh, even the <coughs> more fr uh, frequent revisers, they go in and like John chapter one, when the Bible says, "In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God," and they'll make that a God, a, 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 God, a little g. But if right. you notice in the King James version, <coughs> the the Word is capitalized, <coughs> but they didn't they didn't right. make the W. A little W. Right. That's still capital. Yeah. In, in their own rendition. So what Mark is saying <laughs> about the, Re the argument in Revelation is this. In Revelation 1.8, the New World Translation says, I am the Alpha and Omega, says Jehovah God. All right? Okay. Well, then in Revelation 22 and verse 16, Jesus has just called himself, I am the Alpha and Omega again. And then he says, I, Jesus. So... Jesus is Jehovah God according to their own book. And see, friends, that's what we're, that's what we're saying. That's the, um, doesn't, does Revelation 22, does it say that in there? Read the, you don't read the, the verse we just read from the King James. <clears throat> yeah, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And so. Then in verse 16, I, Jesus. Right. I, Jesus, sent my angel. So, uh, th this is what we're saying, friends. When you, when you find individuals that have, they have to change the Bible to get their own doctrine. And I guarantee you, it will never withstand scrutiny because men have tampered with it. But the Bible, the true Bible, the true Word of God, it won't be, it won't be consistent. Jesus said the Scripture cannot be broken, John 10, 35. So, uh, w when you're finding, when you're comparing the New World Translation with the, the the Bible, then it will all the the King the New World Translation will always fall apart, and we're going to show you some more inconsistency. So if you're taking notes, and I encourage you to do this, you know you write down write down the New World Translation Revelation one, all right Revelation one eight, where it says I Jehovah God and the Alpha and Omega, and then Revelation twenty two, and where it says Jesus says he's the Alpha and Omega. Well, they say Jesus is not Jehovah God. And that's that's why we're we're showing you, friends, this is this is good this is good stuff. This will get the Jehovah's Witness off your porch in a hurry, <clears throat> if that's what you want. And if you if you don't feel like you can do that, you know, write down this number, two seven six three four zero two six five three, and we'll come running. You know? Three four seven seven zero eight four one two. See, and, 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 and we'll, you know, we even offered you know, uh, or consider making little signs to give people put up in their door. You know, Jehovah's Witness comes along. You can say this. 
this uh, property is protected by, you know, a, a word from the Lord or what does the Bible say or members of the Church of Christ, and, you know, we'll call if you if you uh, are a member of the Joe's Witness. So Now, James, the first day that we saw them out door knocking, I was talking to a younger guy named Will. Okay. And I don't think they had really have time to, you know, indoctrinate him on Jehovah Witness doctrine. Okay. And he and I were talking, and, and a lot of times when I'm talking to a Jehovah Witness, I will actually ask them to read Acts chapter 8, verse 37 out of their Bible. First of all, I'll remind them, Revelation 22, 18, 19, where the Bible says, if any man take away any part of the prophecy of this book, God will take away his part uh, out of the kingdom of heaven. Right. And so, and then he says, yeah, that's, that's right. You better not take away from God's word. And so I say, well, would you read out of your New World Translation, Acts chapter 8 and verse 37? And I wish the community could see this, but they have removed verse 37 completely out of their rendition of the Bible. Mm. And so when he saw that, it shocked him. He said, I've got to, I've got to ask some questions about that. Yeah. He, said, he, didn't, he didn't understand that. Right. And so, and about that time, you know, Theotis Brown comes up in his car and he motions for him to come to the car. He didn't want him, you know. Talking with you. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Now, and why is that? Why is it that they wouldn't want them talking to you? You know, they're all right going to talk to people at the door. Right. But someone else who's out uh, knocking doors and spreading a message, you know, all of a sudden that message is too powerful for, for the Jehovah's Witness doctrine. I mean, that right there ought to tell you that they ought to stand the ground. But we've already played, you know, uh, Otis Brown saying, you know, we'll go to another area to avoid confusion. Right. Well, your doctrine is the one promoting it. So here's Mr. Valentine. Let's get back to his uh, statement. Mr. Valentine, Jesus is not part of the Godhead. He says, I, Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's in verse 13. He says, mm -hmm. I am Alpha and Omega. Mm -hmm. But he says, I, Jesus. So mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying, you know. Why is it that, that you all don't recognize Jesus as a part of the Godhead? He's definitely no Godhead. He's what? Now, he's definitely no Godhead. And I got, there's plenty of information on that. He's definitely no Godhead. And I got, there's plenty of information on that. He's definitely no Godhead. And I got, there's plenty of information on that. All right, he's, he's definitely not Godhead. I'm still waiting. And he's got plenty <laughs> of information on it. But yet, that one verse, he didn't even touch, did he? No. I mean, he didn't touch it with 10-foot pole. Now, why not just, why not, if you got plenty of information. Just give me one verse. Why, why, not, why not dig into some of that plenty of information and explain that one verse that your, that your translation has, has messed up? Do that. All right. Uh, how much more on that? Uh, let me just cut down those couple of verses there, because I will also do some research into the original Greek languages and stuff. That was, uh, which one is that now that you just read? I think I That's 2213. Yeah, yeah. The first one was 1A. What was your name here? Mark. Mark. And, and actually, we have a TV program called What Does the Bible Say? I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, that. Yeah, I've seen that case. Okay, we're gonna, I'm going to be discussing some of this tonight. Mm -hmm. um, would you be willing to come on with me and... No, I don't do that. <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> no, I don't do that. <laughs> no, Jesus, Jesus' message is a, a secret message. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he told the apostles not to, not to publicize it. Keep it a hit under a yeah, rock, right? Well, yeah, take the light, put it under a bushel, and <laughs> take it off the candlestick, put it under a bed, and you know, so forth. So this is, and this again is, is very interesting. We'll, we'll get out and we'll go door to door and try to find someone that will listen to us, but we won't get on TV and reach the masses, you know, with with the, with the, their message. That, that's backwards. Yeah, it's backwards. And and you mentioned door knocking, you know, as we did with um, Sherman. Right. You know, and that always that tickled me because here we are out door knocking. You well, you gonna go ahead and just get to him? Well, you could. Well. Uh, <laughs> Let me uh, let me just let's give another verse uh, or another argument. I want people to see an, an argument that will help them to answer Jehovah's Witness doctrine from their own book. Now, see, friends, this this is what's powerful. If you if you know some things from about their book, and then you have them go to it in their book, they can't argue with it. Right. See, now they would argue with the Bible, 
you know, in as much as it's translated correctly, they would like that, or same thing the Mormons say. But notice this. Now, remember, this is the New World Translation we're talking about here. This is John 12, verses 36 to 41. I know that's, that's going to be hard to read. But here's the, here's the argument that we're want, we wanting you to understand. John 12, 36 through 41. Uh, this is where Jesus, I'm going to, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm going, to, I'm going to read it in the King James. And we'll, then we'll put it up and uh, read it from the New World Translation. Here's, here's the, the, uh, the King James. Uh, he says, While ye have light, believe in me, that ye may be children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and uh, did hide himself from them. Now look, verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. All right? That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom... Uh, hath the arm of the Lord been revealed. Therefore, they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. Now here's the kicker right here, verse 41. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. So Isaiah was prophesying about Jesus and it was on an occasion when Isaiah saw his glory and spake of him. So you ask your, your Jehovah's Witness friends, who's being talked about right here in John, John 12? Who is Isaiah talking about? They'll say Jesus. They'll say Jesus. Now here's the New World Translation. Here's the New World Translation of John 12 that we just read. <clears throat> it says, they used Jehovah. Wherever it said Lord, they would put Jehovah. Uh, let's come down. We're going to start in verse uh, 38. So that the word of Isaiah, the prophet, was fulfilled, which he said, Jehovah, who has put faith in uh, the thing heard by us, and as for the arm of Jehovah, to whom has it been revealed? The reason they were not able to believe is that, Isaiah, that again, Isaiah said, he has blinded their eyes, he has made their hearts hard, that they should not see with their eyes, and get the thought with their hearts, and turn and turn around and I should heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke about him. So again, even their New World Translation says that Isaiah was talking about Jesus. All right, you with me so far? The New World Translation says in John 12, 36-41, that Isaiah was talking about Jesus. Now, when you get to Isaiah chapter 6, go back to Isaiah chapter 6 where uh, John is referencing these things said Isaiah. Well, what about Isaiah? What about Isaiah? In Isaiah 6, I can read it right here. Verse 1. All right, go ahead and read it, Mark. In the year that King Uzziah died, I, however, got to see Jehovah sitting on a throne, lofty and lifted up, and the skirts were filled, uh, filling the temple. All right, now if you go on and read down through here, you'll see some of the quotes that John used about their. They're dull of hearing. They won't, re they won't receive the word and so forth. And this is the, the context. See, this is the, the occasion that Isaiah said these things about Jesus. And their own book, the New World Translation says, again, says that Jesus is Jehovah. And they don't like that because Jesus is not Jehovah. Jesus is not deity. But yet their own book says it. So... If you've got a pen and paper and you're ready for the Jehovah's Witness when they come, write down John 12, 36 through 41, and then out beside it, write down Isaiah 6. Get them to read John 12. They'll read John 12. Ask them, who's he talking about? Talking about Jesus. Then go to Isaiah 6, and it says, Isaiah saw Jehovah. So Jesus has to be Jehovah. See? So... They're going to have to make some more. They're going to have to make some more corrections in their book yeah. Mark, to get it right before right. it's all said and done. So, just keep that in mind. So, friends, this is what we're saying. We can help you. We can help you with things like this because we studied it out. We're trying to to help you be prepared 
to give an answer and to answer false doctrine. So at the same time, we want to help you with other things too. So uh, I want to, uh, uh, so let's go, let's go ahead and let's go skip over to uh, uh, Mr. Sherman. This is the man that Mark talked about a little bit ago. He's the man that we went to find Theotis Brown. All right. Theotis Brown said he would call me, and we talked about this last week. I uh, met him on a Saturday, right? He said he'd call me that night, or we'll talk that night, or the next day. So he didn't. So then on Thursday, he still hadn't called. I called him back, asked him to call me back. He still hadn't called. So I'm guessing his phone broken. That's the only thing I figured out. His phone bro- got to be broken. Give me the benefit of the doubt. I, I, I know, because I, I know he would do it, because his wife said, if he said he'll call, he'll call. So his phone's broken, so when his phone gets fixed, he's going to give me a call. Then, now we're going a whole nother week, he still hasn't called, and so uh, we went to find him. We figured, well, he's out door knocking or whatever, so we drove over to their uh, so-called Kingdom Hall, and this man, Mr. Sherman, and another man pull up and ask us, you know, what do we need? And we said, we're looking for Otis Brown. They said, well, he's not in. Usually he comes back by 12. Uh, so we were waiting around to see if he's going to pull in, and while we were waiting... We uh, uh, struck up a conversation with Mr. Sherman here and listen to what he says. Well, don't be. Okay. Okay. That's the first man saying that Otis Brown is probably on his way, but we figure he's already called. Otis, and now he's not going to show up, so we just talked to this man. Well, I appreciate it. I'm willing to sit down and study with him. I bumped the audio up on that other clip if you want to study with him. I'm sorry, I'm I'm using, uh, let me get let me get a better clip here. Sorry about that. Let's see. Is this it? JW yeah. Building? Yep. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just keep over here. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Not as bad as it has been. Well, don't be. Yeah. Can we give you a flyer? Flyer, 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 flyer
beating the bushes, right? I'm two and a half, three hours door knocking, trying to get people to have a Bible study, come to the tent, and I imagine they were doing the same thing, not come to a tent, but have a Bible study. And then two guys walks up and wants to have a Bible study. I ain't got time for that. <laughs> what in the world? <laughs> I just, we were just, we were just baffled at that because, like you said, here we are. We've been trying to, to find people. You don't have a Bible study. We've been out knocking the doors. We, as you said, we passed out over what five thousand flyers, basically saying, "Come to the tent, have a Bible study." Now we have had uh, a few Bible studies. I think uh, one gentleman came to the tent, and we've had, if you count the people that came out to the tent, so. It's not like we've been totally fruitless here, but you know the odds of finding someone that would actually study the Bible is pretty slim. You know, most people don't have time, or a lot of them not even at home. And this is what this guy's doing. He's been out looking for people to have a Bible study right. with, and two of them come up, and he's not interested. I just now, I've got another clip in there. I talked to a, another lady that was Jehovah Witness, and she actually said they never turned down Bible study. So I don't know whether you want to play that one. Yeah, or not. I do. I do. All right, let me see. Uh, I was trying to find that uh, uh, 14, 18. But friends, even, even if he didn't want to study today or the next day or whatever, he could have set up a time. Uh, let's exchange information, set a time, we'll study yeah. Wednesday or whatever. I mean, we, you know, we, we understand... You know, if right now is not a good time, but still, I mean, surely you'd be interested in having a Bible study. Right. But I'm just saying, friends, if you're waiting on the witnesses, or if we're waiting on the witnesses, we're going to be like the Maytag repent. We're we the loneliest people in town <laughs> waiting for the oldest Brown to call or Mr. Valentine to call or Mr. Sherman to have a Bible study. We're, and it's like, it just reminded me of Luke 14, 18, when, uh, with the parable of the of the feast here, uh, you know, they, they, they bid them to come, and they all begin with one consent to make an excuse. And the first one said, I bought a piece of ground, and I must go and look at it. And then Mr. Sherman says, well, uh, I married a wife, and I, I, can't, I can't come. Well, why don't you go get your wife and bring her back? Oh, well, maybe she's sick. Okay, well, go check on her or at least set up another time or something. And James, I don't want the community to think we're just picking on Jehovah's Witnesses either, but I would say... You know, that, this goes for all the so-called denominations. Baptists, we, we played clips last week of uh, Daniel Custer of Riverview Baptist Church. Uh, Jeff Woods at, uh, I believe it's Welcome Baptist Church. No, those guys are willing to sit down and have a Bible study with us. And, and they're the ones that are feeding you all this false doctrine. They're not willing to defend. They won't sit down and study with, we're willing to sit down with them and you, their members, and study they're not willing to do that. That ought to say something about what they're teaching. But if we were selling, if we were selling uh, race tickets or <clears throat> selling, I don't know, Brunswick stew or something or some kind of raffle ticket, oh well, we will talk to you all yeah, day long. Right. But we're trying to give you something free, study the Bible, and no one wants to do that. Well, here's here's the what you're referencing about the Jehovah's Witness saying they never turn down a study. My name's Mark. Mark, I'm Eloise. Eloise. Nice to meet this you. Blake, Blake, Davis. Blake Davis. Nice to meet you. Me too. We're with the Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you supposed to meet me and somebody here? I, well, I was hoping to. Uh, someone came by my house uh, yesterday and left this card. Oh, and, okay, uh, then I'm going to be in a minute. Okay. Okay. And uh, actually, we had, uh, well, I had two ladies come by about a month ago Doris and Denise. Yeah. Do you know yeah, Doris of and Denise? Yeah. And uh, oh, where do you live? I live out on the Horseshoe Road. Horseshoe Road. Well, off the Horseshoe Road. Okay. And, I'm going to uh, be in a minute. They was actually I saying know. that they would come I back. I know her husband's going to come. Okay. This lady, the red car. Who else, who else here? Brother Brown, he's coming back. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Brother Brown. Who else out there? I don't, I don't know if Jim's going back or not, but he'll be in shortly. Okay. You think they'll speak with us today? Oh, did I do. Good, good. Never turn down a Bible study? Never. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> Never. That's what we do. We, that's why we have. They be looking for Bible study. Well, great. That's what. Never. That's what we do. We. <laughs> Never. Good. Turn down a Bible study? Never. Good. Never turn down a Bible study? 
Never. Good. Good. Glad to hear it. <laughs> no, we, that's what we do. We, that's why we are. They be looking for Bible study. Oh, great. For Bible study. Oh, great. That's what we're. <laughs> they be looking for Bible study. Oh, great. That's why we are. They be looking for Bible study. Oh, great. They be looking for Bible study. Oh, great. That's what we're about. Glad to hear it. They don't know sermon. We are looking for Bible study. Looking for Bible study till they come up and slap you in the face. Then it's like, don't want to see it. <laughs> Run away from it. It's like, I don't know. I think it's like some of these Pentecostals, they really saw a miracle. They'd run from it. You know, they want to see one, want to see one so bad. And if they do actually see one, see one they'd, they'd run like a chicken with the head cut off, you know. And so they, they, they just don't want to study the Bible. And uh, that's what we're saying about, about this guy. You know, Mr. Uh, the oldest Brown, he's not, he's not interested in studying the Bible. Uh, now, I will say, James, uh, and I don't know how long it's been. Blake and I did have a study a with him with at their building, and it seems like that's the only time they're willing to study. You had, you had to go ch catch him there. Yeah, and, we had to catch him there, and um, but uh, he got upset when he found out we were recording, and so that again, ended that again. Yeah. Take the, you know, take the message out in secret. So, uh, well, and, you know, maybe that's, that was his problem now. You know, maybe he knows we're recording, whatever. But uh, I just, I mean, if you went to the tent or any of our services, whatever, and said, I want to, I mean, you don't have to say, I want to record, or you don't have to sneak in with a camera. I no. mean, we'll, we'll give you a copy of everything that happened. Paul happens. said, so, uh, Romans 1, 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel Exactly of God. right. So I don't understand why the, uh, uh, why the running from it. But again, friends, if you don't want, don't know how to answer or can't answer, don't feel like you're confident in answering, give us a call because we know these folks are teaching false doctrine, and most people will agree with that. Right. So, so we'll, we're glad to help you out. So, well, Mark, I I was uh, reading through some of their material, and again, this is uh, this is how we can help the community. See, friends, they they will give you all kinds of. Of literature, they used to sell it, you know, you sell it, but they'll give you all kind of literature, like this little book. Uh, I picked this up. I was uh, visiting with a man who was um, a member of the Jehovah's Witness, and uh, he he gave me this information. You know, he didn't really want to take my information too much, but uh, what well, he did take a DVD. So, <clears throat> but this is, you know, a lot of times when you read this, it looks good because they've got Bible references. But friends, the the key is is uh, uh, understanding. You know, sometimes it's not what, what they say, it's what they don't say mm -hmm. that you got to be careful of. So I just went through, since Mr. Valentine was talking about Jesus not being part of the Godhead, I just took this little book, and the chapter 4 says, Who is Jesus? And just began reading through some of the things that they say about Jesus. And I want to show you just how easy it is with the, just a little bit of understanding, and a good Bible concordance or something like that, where you can see where they're really not telling you everything there is about Jesus. All right, they're not telling you uh, what the what the Bible really says uh, about Jesus, even though the book says what does the Bible really teach. And so I want to give you an example of this. In this uh, quote, now this is a quote from from this little book, and it's from page forty-one. It says. Uh, we'll start reading up here. It says, Jesus is Jehovah's most precious son, and for good reason. He is called the firstborn of all creation, for he was God's first creation, Colossians 1.15. Well, that's not what that verse means. But he says there is something else that makes his son, this son special. He's the only begotten son. That means that Jesus is the only one directly created by God. Jesus is also the only one whom God used when he created all other things, Colossians 1.16. Then, too, Jesus is called the Word. All right, let's stop there for a minute. Uh, Jesus is called the Son. Now, the Jehovah's Witness will tell you that Jesus is really who? A God. All right, a God, but specifically he is an, an angel. angel. Yeah. Michael the archangel is what, the, what they'll say. So he's a created being. He's an angel. Now, this is what we're saying, friends. When you read them say... Jesus is the Son of God, all right? Jesus is God's most precious Son. See? Now, they'll tell you He's a Son, right? That He's a, a, an angel. 
but they won't, they'll use it, they'll kind of talk like they believe the same. But if Jesus is an angel, all you have to do is notice what the Bible says in Hebrews 1 verse 4. Hebrews 1 and verse 4, and this is where a little Bible study comes in and it'll help you. Being made so much better than the angels. Now just stop there, Mark. If Jesus is an angel, how can he made be how can he be made better than the angels? If he is one of them. Right. I mean, if you're if you're one of something, then you can't be made better than the others, you know, and speak to it like that. So being made uh, much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Now look at verse five. For unto, unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son? He's asking them a question. Unto what yeah. of the angels? Well, according to Jehovah's Witness, Jesus. Jesus. No. <laughs> but see, but they say, well, Jesus is the son of God, and he's an angel. But Paul says that God never called uh, an angel son. All right? Never gave him this name, unto, unto, Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and they sh and he shall be to me a son. Well, James, I just recognized a another addition to the New World Translation. Okay. Where you were at in Colossians, if you pull up Colossians one uh, sixteen. And all right. The Bible says, "For by him were all things created that are in heaven and, and that are in earth." Now they understand, by him were all things created. So that means Jesus could not have been a created being. He is eternal. But yet in their rendition, notice what it says. Because by means of him all other things, other things. were created. So they added yeah. the word other to the scripture. To make Jesus a created being. Right. And then everything else was created by him. See what we're talking about, friend? Subtle. I that's mean a, it's that's a perversion. It, it is very it's very subtle. And if you're just reading a cursory reading, well, that sounds the same. No, but it's not. And it's just like, you know, the knot in the devil's tail. You know, you put one other word in there, change the meaning. So we're trying to help you out, friends. We're trying to help you out. So they say Jesus is a son of God, and Paul said, and that he's an angel. But the Bible really teaches that Jesus is the son of God because he, I mean, he can't be an angel because he is the son of God. All right? Now, uh, let's look at another another part of this of this verse or this uh, booklet that they're that they're giving away. All right, same same place, same place. It says, "Is the firstborn son equal to God?" As some believe, that is not what the Bible teaches. Really? Now let's just notice this. As we noticed in the preceding paragraph, the Son was created. Obviously, then he had a beginning, whereas Jehovah God has no beginning or end. All right, so the Son is not equal to God. That's what they say. That's what they say. Well, let's look at Philippians 2 and verse 5. Philippians 2 and verse 5. All right. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now Paul says that Christ was equal with God. He didn't think that being equal with God was something that he just couldn't give up. All right. Now listen to what the New World Translation says. The New World Translation says, in Philippians 2 and verse 5. I think I have it up here. Uh, it says, Keep this mental attitude in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who, although he was existing in God's form, gave no consideration to a seizure, namely, that he should be equal to God. So, they say in Philippians 2.5 that Jesus, he, he, he didn't even consider being equal to God. 
I mean, a created being, created angel, he's not going to try to be equal with God. That's what they say. All right? That's what it's they total say. total contradiction. Yeah. Now, here, here's the kicker, friends. Here, here's the kicker. This is where you need to write down some notes again. All right? If they say Jesus is not equal with God, write down Philippians 2, 5, NWT. That's New World Translation. And then write down John chapter 5 and verse 18. John 5 and verse 18. Now, here's the King James. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because... Let's, let's back up for a minute here. Jesus answered them, My father worketh here the two, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he was not only... Because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but he said that he that God was his father making himself equal with God. All right? Now, the New World Translation, Philippians 2.5 says, Jesus, he didn't even consider being equal with God. But now look at what they say in John 5, verse 18. John 5 and verse 18 of their book says this. Jesus said, My Father has kept working until now, and I keep working. On this account, indeed, the Jews began seeking all the more to kill him because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was calling God his own Father, making himself equal to God. Wow, I thought a while ago they said he didn't even consider it. <laughs> See, <laughs> I'm just saying, friends, the New World Translation is a contradiction. Is a walking Throw it contradiction. Away. Man, get man. rid of it, man. <laughs> so you see that? Um, Even the scribes recognized yeah. uh, Mark chapter 2 when he kill, uh, healed the, the man with the palsy. They said, no, only God can forgive sins. I don't know where you're going to read the whole. Yeah. They're coming to him, bringing him. Uh, and when they could not nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken, broken. it up, uh, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Wait, sorry. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. And notice verse 6. There was a certain scribe sitting there and reasoning in their heart, said, Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can give, forgive sins but God only? Okay, they recognize. Yeah. Must be God. So Jesus must be God. That's right. Not a God, but the God. And so, again, friends, just a little, I mean, I'm talking about, I found this in five minutes, Mark. You know, just, just the idea, Philippians 2, 5 says he's not, he didn't even think about being equal to God. And then John 5, 18, their own book says he was. We got a phone call. You want to work from the Lord? Yeah, uh, James, you and Mark might have forgotten something now regarding the New World Translation. They can change that next week. I mean, they've changed it many times in the past. So, I mean, you might even want to send them those verses that contradict so they can change them so they can get on to the next revised vision. Maybe, you know, they'd send you a check or something for that. I think they're in Newburgh, New York is where the pu publishing is. Okay. I actually think there's so many contradictions in there that they probably... Wouldn't catch them all. Th those living today wouldn't be allowed to see all the changes. Yeah, they yeah. So, well, I don't, I don't think God would allow them to... I mean, there's no way that it's going to make sense because once they change something to their view, then they're going to run into another error. It's like a maze you're never, you're never going to get out of, and that's right. why they find themselves... How many revisions have they had? At least four, right? Well, uh, well, the book that I have is kind of torn, which doesn't bother me too much. Uh, picked it up at the discount bargain men, probably. Uh, it doesn't say what edition this is. It's pretty old. Mark's got one that's a lot newer. I just threw but, that away. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, they'll keep changing and changing it. So, I mean, maybe you're right. Maybe that'd be good be a so, uh, be a good source of income for me and Mark. I mean, we could send them their <laughs> send them their revisions and not not send them all. You know, just enough to get them to redo it and then I'd send give them, them more. a good revision. <laughs> well, maybe Phil Lewis can help you out with that, but I appreciate you showing the contradictions. Yeah. So, it, it, and you know, isn't that beneficial, caller? Isn't that beneficial? I mean, to just a few things to know, 
that would, I mean, I, I don't know. It's like, it's almost like a first aid kit. You don't have to know, you know, you don't have to be a brain surgeon to save somebody's life. But if you know just some basic CPR, you know, some basic uh, first aid, you can save a life. And so if you just know some basic uh, contradictions from the New World Translation, I mean, it, it can really help. Save a soul, maybe. So, all right, well, thank you for your call. Yes. So, uh, so Mark, I just, you know, and I want to show the, uh, uh, the viewers, too, just how, uh, what dishonest they are. Do you know, the reason why they came up with their own version, number one, is because they need Jehovah all in it. But, friends, I want to show you what we're talking about. I want to show you the, the inconsistency. You talk about people picking and choosing verses. Uh, I want you to notice how they pick and choose when they translate a certain word, Jehovah. All right? In John, let's go back to John uh, 12. John 12 and, and where we were reading earlier, verse 36 or so. Uh, let's say verse... Uh, Let's just look at 30, uh, 38. And the saying, Isaiah the prophet, that it might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? All right, that word Lord, that word Lord is, and I'm going to have to get my uh, Bible over here where I can get my interlinear up here, but is the word uh Curios, all right? And it, and it means Lord, Master, that, that sort of thing. That's, that's the same word. That's curios, all right? So they translated it Jehovah because they want Jehovah to be uh, being spoken of in this particular verse. But look at Luke 6 and verse 46. Luke 6 and verse 46. Now, I want to read in, from the New World Translation. I didn't have time to uh, insert this. where well, you might see it on the screen. But Luke 6 and verse 46, here's what the New World Translation says. And you can read along. Here, here's the verse right here. Luke 6, verse 46. Why then do ye call me Lord, Lord, but do not the things I say? Now guess what this word is right here. Would it not be curious? It's the same. Yeah. But here they don't translate it Jehovah because they don't want Jesus to be saying, Why call you me Jehovah, Jehovah, and do not the things which I say? But it's the same word. See? But so they're not they very just... consistent. They're and not they're, very consistent. And they're doing the same thing that, that Baptists, met. they change the Word of God to suit their doctrine. Right. Whatever their doctrine is. <clears throat> we know Mark always said that, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can't, I can't read the King James, you know, I can't understand it, you know, all those uh, these and thou's and whatever, and I can't understand it. But the bottom line is people change the Bible not because they can't understand it, but because they can understand it. Exactly. And they know exactly what it's saying, and therefore, in order for it to fit their beliefs or their ideas or what their doctrines, they have to change it to make it fit. And so, uh, we're just saying, friends, the you know the the uh, um, Jehovah's Witness, they're not honest. They're not honest. They won't study with us. You know, they'll study if they think that they can pull the wool over your eyes, they'll be glad to study with you. And that's when we're saying, hey, if, if they come to your door, give Mark a call. Give me a call. We'll come over, you know, or set up a Bible study with them. Go ahead and set up a Bible study with them. Say, yeah, be, you know, come back tomorrow at a certain time. Give us a call. Tell us when it is. We'll be glad to come over. Right. We'll be glad to come over. And all that's right? what we say about all well, Anybody, any preacher, that's right. You want, call. you want to work from the Lord? Sorry. Hey, I just want to thank you guys for the uh, teaching on tonight. It really had uh, inspired me. And uh, I am well aware of these false teachers and false prophets that are going throughout the land trying to deceive God's children. So thank you for this lesson. It really was good. 
I wish everybody could have heard it, but uh, uh, the word says that study to show thyself approved. Right. A workman needed not be ashamed can rightly divide the word of truth. And you guys really do uh, really do a lot of studying, and uh, you dig deep, and that's what I like about it. Because I had been tossed to and fro with a lot of uh, denominationism, Baptist, uh, Methodist, you know, uh, United Holy Church. uh, And I realized that every one of them was teaching something different, uh, man-made doctrine. They, They won't stick to the Word of God. Right. And we really need to uh, be able to uh, understand the so, Word of God and be able to uh, discern what, what right. is truth and what so, is sir, not truth. Because Jesus said He is the way, the truth, sir, and the light. Right. That's so, right. sir, let me ask you a question. Uh, wh- where, are you, where are you calling from? You I'm mind? calling from Eden. I, you guys okay. have been to my home, and, uh, and uh, I, uh, we have had some studies, and I have visited. Oh. Church down in the um okay uh, on, uh, the boulevard the Church of Christ is your, is your um well I don't want to call your name I, I think I know who you are uh, yeah why 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 haven't we had another study then if it's who I'm thinking about can you turn your TV oh. can you turn your TV down just a little bit okay now uh, yeah why haven't we had another study I. I if if you are who I think you are, I know we've had a couple of studies anyway. Yes, we have. Uh, why haven't we Why haven't we seen each other again? Just a, a little slowness on my behalf. A whole lot of slowness and some medical issues. Okay. Um, at the VA hospital. Uh, okay. But uh, well, I'm not trying to get too personal. I'm just saying, I, you know, uh, I know well, we sir, we have Bible studies set up some time and. You know, they get canceled, and we just want to see you again and, you know, keep studying together. I'd be more than happy so, to have you guys out. Uh, well, sir, about, about 10 or 11 years ago, I was exactly where you are. I tried them all, Baptist, <laughs> Methodist, Pentecostal, Holiness, and I could see they're, they're not agreeing, not with the Bible, not with each other or anything. So don't feel bad. Uh, with, uh, are you able to get out? No, 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 I'm not. Uh, I'm okay. home, homebound. But, uh, and like I said, you guys have been, I stay on uh, Brightwood Court in Eden. You have yeah, I, I know exactly. Okay. I have a lot of your tent meeting tapes yep. uh, that I've looked at, and uh, Johnny really did some uh, spiritual, Holy Spirit teaching uh, before you guys came on. I was uh, listening well, to him and and uh, he was going back in history with can, the books that. Can, uh, can I call your name? Can I call your name? Yes. All right, Mr. Galloway, right? Me, hey. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. You call the right name. Uh, you know, I, um, I'm gonna come see you. Come on, I'd love to have you come. Okay. Nobody else wants to come. Well, I, I know. It seemed like every time I go out, like the last few times I went out, you know, I, I never could get anybody to the door. I guess you were still able to get out and about, but. Uh, How about bring some more you know, DVDs? We, I'll bring some more DVDs, and you know we'll have a Bible study. Sure, I'm all for that. Okay. I'm fine with that. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Well, listen, Mr. Galloway, we're out of time. We're up against the clock. So, uh, well, God uh, bless you guys. Go- Keep up the good work. Okay. And uh, I, I love to to get studied. I just love okay. to study and, and, and get it for what it really is. And not sugar coated and uh, okay for money. You guys right. are just just wonderful. We you we know we, we try to be the real deal. Yeah, so, the real deal. Okay, well, thanks and for your call, Mr. Guys, Galloway. Have a good evening until I see y'all again. Uh, next week will be fine for me. My wife is retiring this Friday, so uh, okay. We're gonna. I, take I got your name and your number. Be back. I know exactly week. where you live. All right. All thank, right. So thank you very you much. Guy. Thank you very much. All right. Good call. Good, good yeah, it was a good call. In. Good way to end. Uh, friends, and I think that just shows you that, you know, we're we're sincere. I mean, here's a man. I know we've had 
two or three Bible studies uh, with him in the past. There's Mark. Sorry about that, Mark. <laughs> I, I, I already showed it now. It's Maytag a, Mark, the, Mark the Maytag repairman. He's, he's lonely. We're still waiting for Mr. Valentine. And, still waiting. And, I'm uh, waiting. I'm st still waiting <laughs> and waiting for Otis to call back. So until next time, friends, remember the tent meeting one more night tomorrow night. Until, until then, uh, we'll see you back here next week. Always remember to ask what does the Bible say and you get a word from the Lord. Thanks for being on again, Mark. Appreciate it. Come have on good, out and see us. Have a good night.